Welcome to the second session of our symposium. I have the pleasure and the honor to chair this uh, second panel. My name is Ulrich Kapreus. I'm Professor Emeritus of the Hertie School of Governance and um, the second half of the shared chair of uh, Klaus Offer at the Hertie School. Uh, now he's the only one who uh, shares this half, this full, sh this full chair uh, with his personality, but I think he is uh, really, as we have seen, his capacity able to, full, to, to fill it uh, completely. Now, Klaus Offer, in his, uh, in his uh, introducing remarks this morning, uh, somehow, I guess, undermined the design of the, and the construction of our program, uh, which, as you see and as you know from, from the program, had uh, three, um, had a, a hidden agenda. The first was democracy as an ideal, because transition to, to democracy means that there are societies which yearn for democracy. So democracy is an ideal, is an objective, is a purpose which they pursue. And the second then was about uh, uh, a more um, uh, pessimistic view, a skeptic view, namely uh, crisis and dilemmas, and dilemmas of democracy and diagnosis and prospects, and prospects can, of course, be more or less skeptic as well. So this was the, the second part, uh, which is assigned to us. And the third one is then again a more optimistic view, namely innovations. Now, this morning, um, as I said, undermined this, uh, 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 let me say, the perception and the idea and the, and the, the expectation which we had, namely the optimistic view, because there, all, there was only, I think, uh, uh, Rupnik, who had a somewhat slightly optimistic view on democracy, whereas the others uh, more or less uh, gave a very bleak uh, perspective uh, on, uh, on democracy. And that reminded me of a, of a, of a wisdom, uh, not a Chinese wisdom, by the way, Chris, Ivan, uh, but just a, a general wisdom that how can you make people unhappy, uh, people who have passionate desires? Uh, the first way is, of course, to refuse to fulfill uh, their desires. The second is to fulfill them. And that's exactly what seemed to have happened in the East European and post-communist societies. Now, Still, uh, we will continue in our original plan, namely to go to dig deeper into the, um, into the problems of democracy. So to go dig deeper into the reasons why uh, the view on, um, on democracy, at least for intellectuals and for social, sci for social scientists, has to be more and more skeptic than for those who uh, assemble in the streets, uh, the crowds in the streets who yearn for democracy and uh, uh, who are optimistic and uh, as, as, uh, as Stephen Holmes uh, said this morning, who think they have a future, and they associate their future with the future of, with, with democracy. So this is something optimistic and uh, something which is very sympathetic. But from an intellectual view, uh, point of view, uh, I think we, we have to be more, I wouldn't say pessimistic, but uh, maybe more skeptic in this respect. And that is, the, and that is uh, certainly uh, the objective of our, uh, and the topic of our, uh, of our panel here. Um, when we speak ab about democracy, we always, of course, think of liberal democracy. Um, and liberal democracy, um, and we, when, you, when, you, when you try to analyze liberal democracy, we think we have to, uh, to focus on uh, one uh, contradiction uh, which uh, is characteristic uh, of uh, liberal democracy, because on the one hand, it's a political system which is supposed to, fill, to fulfill um, uh, the idea of collective self-determination of the people, but at the same time, it has also to maintain a sphere of individual freedom and even tenacity which is beyond the control of the collective will formation. So this tension between the ideal of collective and collectivity and collective self-determination on the one hand and individual freedom on the other hand I think is characteristic of liberal uh, democracy. While collective self-determination requires the participation of other regarding public-minded and responsible citizens, individual freedom and self-will, um, the, indivi the individual's freedom includes uh, the possibility to behave in an irresponsible and even irrational manner, to be driven by passions, not by reason, 
to pursue their personal and private agenda and to abstain from any kind of civic uh, activity altogether. Thus, collective will is a mere aggregation of motley individual preferences that may create results which uh, fulfill collective rationality, but at the same time, it may also um, create um, results which lack this collective rationality. As we know, Rousseau believed that he had dissolved the tension between collective and individual self-determination by claiming that the individual had to be forced to be free by his subjection to the collective will. But in fact, we simply, he simply suppressed one element of the tension without necessarily uh, having the guarantee of collective rationality. So we have to live with that tension. Uh, there's no, that makes no sense to suppress one of these uh, elements. But this afternoon, we will not discuss this um, suppression, so to speak, of um, individual um, freedom by uh, the dominance of the collective will, but uh, rather deal with the reverse possibility and danger, namely the subjection of the public sphere to the imperatives and functional requirements of the private sphere. So this is the reverse danger, the reverse uh, domination, a kind of domination uh, which destroys uh, and may destroy democracy. The guarantee of domain reservé for spheres of social interaction impervious to collective decisions of the members of the polity creates social spaces in which the private autonomy of resourceful individuals and groups turns into power over vulnerable segments of the society. This guarantee entails spheres of economic, social, and cultural domination and dependency which are largely beyond the control of the democratic state. It constitutes a sphere of social power which checks the democratic state's political authority. This has been the Achilles heel of liberal democracy since its very introduction. So it is perhaps more appropriate to label liberal democracy as capitalist democracy. One of its crucial features is the fact that democratic governments need not only the confidence of their citizens, but equally that of the actors of economic and financial markets. They have to respond simultaneously, to quote uh, Fritz Scharf, uh, respond simultaneously to citizens' demands for public services and redistribution and the functional requirements of ensuring the continuing profitability of a capitalist economy. Obviously, this tension between the democratic polity and the market has many aspects in which the Europeanization and the globalization of the economic and financial markets play a pivotal role. We are happy and proud to have three distinguished scholars of this panel, on this panel who have made seminal analytical, normative, and, corporate, and co uh, comparative contributions to what we may call the democratic question. And what is equally important, today's, uh, honored, uh, today's honored person, Klaus Offer, has been an intellectual companion, as we have heard already this morning, of our guests, and as I know, also a close friend as well. Let me now engage in a seemingly a performative contradiction, and briefly introduce these gentlemen of the panel, who, of course, need no introdu introduction at all. And I start with uh, Jürgen Habermas, is professor of emeritus of Goethe Institute, uh, Goethe, sorry, Goethe's. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to be the board, so this is still my, my personal idiosyncrasy. So, emeritus at Goethe University in Frankfurt am Main, where he held a chair as professor of philosophy between 1983 and 1994. He has held several appointments as fellow and visiting professor to, re to research institutions worldwide. In his large opus, in the realm of philosophy, social theory, and political science, the analyses of democracy and its institutional conditions have always played an essential role, ranging from the modern classic text on Strukturwandel der Öffentlichkeit, the structural transformation of the public sphere, through Faktizität und Geltung, between facts and norms, to his recent essay on the Verfassung Europas, the crisis of the European Union, which is due to appear in English language, I think, in May 2000, uh, this year. We look forward to, uh, we look, uh, we look forward to listening uh, to Professor Habermas, and welcome to you. Philip Schmitter is Professor Emeritus of Political Science at the European Uni University Institute in Florence, 
where he now serves as professorial fellow. He has taught at the University of Chicago, Stanford, and as a visiting professor at several international research institutions. He has published books and articles on comparative politics, on regional integration in Western Europe and Latin America, and on the transition from authoritarian rule in Southern Europe and Latin America. His publications include the Green Paper on the Future of Democracy in Europe for the Council of Europe, uh, published in 2004, Diagnosing and Designing Democracy, um, published 2008, and The Future of Real Existing Democracy, uh, equally 2008. His current work centers on the possibility of post-liberal democracy in Western Europe and North America. We also look forward to listening, you, uh, listening to you and uh, welcome to Professor Philipp Schmitter. And last but not least, of course, Wolfgang Streeck is director at the Max Planck Institute for the Study of Societies in Cologne and professor, professor of sociology at the University of Cologne. He was professor of sociology and industrial relations at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and was senior fellow at the Social Science Research Center in Berlin. The focus of his research has been the intersections between political science, political economy, and economic sociology. His publications include Reform in Capitalism, Institutional Change in the German Political Economy, published in 2009, The Diversity of Democracy, Corporatism, Social Order and Political Conflict, uh, published in 2006, and most recently, The Crisis of Democratic Capitalism. So we also look very much forward to listening to you, Wolfgang Streeck. Welcome to Wolfgang Streeck. And the panelists will present their papers in the following order. I think Wolfgang Streeck will start on, I think, evident and obvious reasons, uh, because this, his is, so to speak, uh, capitalist democracy, so to speak, his topic and his, uh, um, his uh, essential and his focus of, of research. Then followed by uh, Jürgen Habermas, and then uh, the last speaker then will be Philipp Schmitter. So, uh, Wolfgang Streeck, you have the floor.